confirm that you can get married, then you serve that chocolate that they brought because they believe that uh, a sweet start is a start for sweet days. Uh, so it's expected that the future bride cooks the coffee. And the difference of Turkish coffee, I don't know if any of you have ever tried it before. Did you? No? Do you have good memories or bad memories about it? Really? Good. Because it's very strong. Uh, it's very strong, that's why uh, it's like espresso served in small cups and you have to have that creamy bubble at the top of it. If it has no bubbles, you have, it's not your time to get married. You cannot even cook a Turki proper Turkish coffee. Uh, even at the restaurant sometimes. What type of coffee is this? They, they are not happy with it. But uh, it's very hard to cook a coffee for a big group. That's why most of the restaurants don't want to cook Turkish coffee. Because you have to cook the Turkish coffee one by one, two or maximum three at a time. It's not like filter coffee. Because if you cook them all together, you have no bubbles. The significance of that bubble. So if she wants to get married, if she wants to give it a try, she cooks the coffee in the regular way with sugar. What if she dislikes? What do you think that she does? No sugar, no bubble. You are very pleasant people, nice people. You can be a little bit meaner. No coffee? Well, okay. I know, I can see that you will be going to the paradise. <laughs> well, I, let me tell you my previous comments. People said, well, uh, I had kind of like hundreds of people who said she po puts poison in the coffee. <laughs> I had a couple of ladies who wanted to spit in the coffee. <laughs> but my favorite answer so far, it's only once in four years. I had a lady from Ohio who thought about it for 10 minutes and she was like, I found it. I said, what is it lady? She said, she pees in the coffee. Oh. Oh. I wish you had a chance to see the expression on her husband's face. <laughs> he was looking at her as if it's the first time that he saw her. <laughs> Who is this woman? <laughs> the true answer is that she put salt in the coffee instead of sugar. And it is expected that the gentleman drinks it to the end. Because it can be a rejection, but on the other hand, it may be a test too. Because uh, sometimes she wants to get married, but she wants to give him a try. So, imagine that you are a big family and one of you has a salty coffee. If he doesn't tell you about it, nobody will understand him. So, if he drinks the salty coffee to the end, without any bad expression or anything, it means that he would be a good husband, not telling the faults of his wife to anyone, not telling their secrets to anyone, including his family, and on the other hand, having a taste like salty coffee, no problem about cooking. I read a story on the internet, it has nothing to do with the tradition, it's about salty coffee, it tells about a young couple, the gentleman was after the girl for a long time, but the girl was not interested. And one day, she thought that she's being rude, always rejecting him, and they went out for a coffee. He was very excited, he was shaking, he didn't know what to talk about, and finally he decided that maybe they should order the coffee, so maybe it will start the conversation. But he was so excited that he would, when he would ask for a coffee with sugar, he said, a coffee with salt, please. Oh. And you know, when you do something stupid, especially when you are with a person that you care, you feel real stupid. And he didn't know how to correct it. He just said, well, I was grown up by the beach, and the salty taste reminds me of my childhood and my family, so I always have my coffee salty. <laughs> the girl said, okay, it's a little bit interesting, but if you like it that way, that's fine. And then she thought that a person who is sentimental like this, maybe I should try to know, uh, know him a little bit more better. And they started seeing each other and finally they decided to get married. When it is the marriage, he wanted to confess her the truth. And then he thought maybe if, he know, if she knows the truth, she will think that he lied to her from the very first day. And then he said, well, you know, I tried hard, let me not risk it. 
He didn't say anything. He kept drinking the salty coffee. <laughs> and they got married. They were married for 45 years. They had kids, grandkids, and finally the gentleman was sick. And when he was sick, he wrote her a letter asking her to open it after he passed away. And unfortunately, a couple, a couple of months later, he passed away. When she opened the letter, it was a very interesting letter. It was like, honey, meeting you was the best thing in my life. Without you, nothing would be the same. We shared the good and the bad together. You are the mother of my two lovely kids. We were so lucky to have our grandkids. And uh, without you, nothing would be the same. And throughout these 45 years, I uh, tried to show my love and respect to you at all times. And I never lied to you except for one thing. Do you remember the first day that we met? I was so excited that I said something stupid like this and I didn't know how to correct it. And then I was so afraid of losing you that I kept on this stupid lie. But now I'm dying, I have nothing to lose and I want to confess you the truth. The truth is I hate salty coffee. But <laughs> drinking salty coffee with you for 45 years was still the best thing in my life. Aww. Sentimental Ed. Now please, Pastor. <laughs> all natural dyes, so they do it in small villages around the cities. Each village has its own style, so it's quite difficult to see the same pattern or same <laughs> geometric design in two different carpets. They all come in different sizes, like 3x5, 5x6, 6x9, 10x12. <laughs> It really depends on the material. Each and every carpet has a story, by the way. Such as, such as, you might see, if you pay attention, you might see a slight difference between the carpets, the way they sweep. Just these are what we call the fringes. Some carpet has a high fringes, and some carpet they don't have the high fringes. The difference between is very simple. The person the lady who actually did this carpet hide the fringes and laid outside their windows to let other people in the village that I have a boundary with somebody. So I I have a lover. So don't come and knock my door. I'm already taken. The ones that they don't, they're simply free and they're welcome to be just you know come inside and try to meet, introduce yourself to the other men in town. Bunu da açalım. Tamam, bu şey değil mi? Uşaklara değil. Uşaklara değil. Our next category is bulun katın and this is what it is. I'm getting you drinking Turkish coffee. What a cute little cup. So how is it? Very good. Is it good? This size bulun katın will take approximately. How is it, sweetie? It's delicious. It's like something this is delicious. I love it. I really like it. Six months. We'll try it again. If you love it, then. Drink up. How is it, Mike? Cotton on cotton? Yes. He's busy. It's like a forward show. He's going to be buying some stuff. This is what we call the moisturized cotton. This is what we call the moisturized cotton. It's pure 100% cotton, however, it has been chemically treated. So it looks like it's silk. It's as soft as silk. You can feel the. Can you feel the difference? Okay. 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 Okay